What's up YouTube? Welcome back, Aeneas here. Today we're switching it up a little bit. Instead of a MTGA gameplay video, we're going to take a look at some of the Dominaria United preview cards. And boy does this set look good. Uh, a lot of the last few sets I was pretty lackluster for. Um, and Kamigawa looks pretty nice, but the other sets haven't been that great for me. This one already just started and boy there are a lot of cool cards in this set that I think are going to make new meta, new decks, uh, switch things up, switch the power dynamics a little bit in standard and in older formats. So I'm really looking forward to this set and uh, so today I want to share with you some of the cards that I think look really good and uh, I think are going to make waves in the next few months and weeks. And uh, yeah, definitely they're going to be part of the five new brews that I, I put out every set. So five new brews for Dominar United. It's going to come out soon, but uh, just before that I wanted to share with you the cards that I think look really cool. So uh, we'll probably have two or three parts to this video because there's a lot of sweet cards. And uh, yeah, so let's just get into some of them. Here are some of the really cool ones I like so far. Alright, uh, the first one we got here is a white flyer. It's an angel. Uh, it's four mana, two and two whites, and it's a three four with flying and lifelink. So, so far you're probably thinking, eh, that's not that great. Four mana for three four, you know, usually we're getting a four mana for four four with flying and vigilance, or four mana for four three with some extra text. So, uh, hold on, there's more to this card, okay? So, uh, this card has kicker, and you can kick for a black or red or both a black and a red. And for each time you kick, this card does two damage to any target. So you can do it up to two times, and uh, do two two damage times two if you've kicked both times. And it's kind of cool because it's got like a lightning helix type of effect where the two damage also will gain you two life. Uh, so. If you have this card in some like mid rangey angel deck or uh, control shell, you can put this on the board, maybe turn 5 or turn 6, kick it, kill off a creature or two creatures, and gain yourself some life back, and still have a pretty good sized body there on the battlefield that's flying and has lifelink. So, definitely going to be a really cool stabilization card. Basically, a creature with removal upside. Uh, yeah, not much to say about this. This is a cool card. If you got some sort of Esper Shell, or maybe Mardu, or even just White Black Angels, I think you're going to want to have this card in your deck. And uh, we got quite a few Angels in the last set, Streets of New Compena, and I think even a couple in Kamigawa for some reason. Uh, but I know there's a few Angels floating around for sure, so this will fit right into that. Uh, that shell, uh, especially in maybe Historic or something, you might be able to play this as kind of the top end of your Angel's deck, who knows. Uh, but yeah, looks like a pretty sweet card, definitely going to try it out some in some shells and see how it goes, but it looks fun. Alright, so the next card, Braids, a Risen Nightmare. This card uh, it looks very cool to me as well. It's kind of got that uh, Doom Foretold or Stacks effect where you're stacking your own things to cause a bad effect for your opponent. And uh, yeah, let's, let's read through the card. So Braids Arisen, Braids Arisen Nightmare, 1 and 2 blacks, Legendary Creature Nightmare, it's a 3-3. And at the beginning of your end step, which is nice, so it happens pretty much right away, beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker. So even a land, too. A lot of times they say non-land permanent, but this one includes lands. If you do, each opponent may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with it. For each opponent who doesn't, that player loses two life and you draw a card. So, yeah, basically you, if you're flooding on lands, you can sack your lands, and they have to either sack their land or give you a card and lose life. Or uh, maybe you play some ETB enchantments, 
like Omen of the Sea or um, one of the Burglar Rats or something like that where you play the creature that makes them discard and then you have a 1-1 one -one body that you don't really care about. You can sack that and get some value out of it. Um, yeah, it's pretty. It seems pretty sweet. Uh, I guess the, the only downside in retrospect is that the opponent gets to choose, and typically when the opponent gets to choose, it makes the effect a bit weaker. So you can't force them to sack the creature. If you're losing on the board and they and they don't sack the creature, you know all you're, you're getting is a card out of it. But that's still a pretty good effect. Um, it's pretty good that you can get rid of some things you don't care about that have already got their purpose and recuperate some value out of it. So definitely not a bad card. Um, we'll see if it's like an all-star player or not. Maybe it spawns its own archetype. Who knows? Um, but definitely a very exciting card that I'm looking forward to try to brew around in, in the coming few days. So yeah, Braids, looking pretty sweet, excited for that one. Uh, the next card that I'm looking forward to is Cosmic Epiphany. So this card looks a little bit like unassuming, right? It's a sorcery, it's six mana, four and two blue. Uh, you know, it's got, I hope it's a really good effect if you're paying six mana for it, right? But what does the text say? Draw cards equal to the number of instants and sorceries in your graveyard. So, if you are playing like some sort of uh, is it tempo deck, or maybe is it control, or um, could even be Demir control, or, or something like that, like uh, blue white, you know, a lot of times you're going to play like a removal on turn one, maybe a draw spell on turn two. Turn three, you play like a board wipe or something like that, or maybe another removal. So you're definitely already going to have like three or four instants or sorceries in your graveyard by turn six. Um, you could even have more than that. You could reasonably even have like six instants or sorceries in your graveyard. And you play this card, you're basically going to just refill your whole hand at that point. Uh, so this this is like gonna definitely swing the, t the tide of the game in your favor if you can get this card off. And uh, we're also gonna see that there's a lot of other cards in Dominar United that want instants and sorceries in your graveyard. So having this as kind of like your top end, refill your hand, uh, re-energize, re-fuel, that kind of stuff, uh, it's going to be a big payoff in, the, in those sorts of decks along with the other cards that we're going to see later. So I'm really excited for this card. I think it has potential to be really good and uh, I can't wait to stick this in some, some control decks most likely and uh, see, see how it does. Yeah, as long as you've got some sweepers or something to stabilize the board, this could be really good to just refill you. That's all, That was always the big problem with control decks, right? It's like you can trade one for one, trade one for one with everything. Um, your board wipers are like your main value that you get maybe a two or three for one with a board wipe. And then you always have to hope like, oh, if I need my planeswalker to live to draw me some cards. Well, if you have this, you know, you're going to refill your hand instantly with one card. So that's pretty sweet, pretty sweet card. All right, so the next one, cut down. Now, cut down. If you have, if you've been watching my other videos, the Grixis videos, um, if not, you should definitely check it out because they're sweet and that deck is sweet. But uh, you know that the one mana removal slot is very important in historic meta right now, for especially for control decks. Uh, but even all decks in general, one mana removal very important and. Um, Fatal Push is kind of like the king in Historic and even Pioneer to some extent. So, uh, yeah, it's hard to find other cards that are as good as Fatal Push, but this card gets pretty close to Fatal Push, to be honest. Uh, in my Grixis deck, I'm running four Fatal Push and two Unholy Heat, and a lot of times I find the Unholy Heat don't really get there. They're great in decks like Phoenix, something like that where you're like constantly milling yourself and you can easily get your four permanents in the graveyard, but in a control deck, it takes a long time to get there and uh, it's not very reliable. 
especially early game when you need to kill something that Fatal Push can't hit. But this cutdown, on the other hand, is going to hit most of those things. So um, in Elves, there's like the Elvish War Leader or something like that, Elvish Lord. I can't remember the names of them, but a lot of times they're like 2-2s two that buff your team and uh, they cost 3 mana, so Fatal Push doesn't always hit it. Cut down, it's going to always kill those Elf Lords. Uh, other cards this one kills that uh, Unholy Heat can't. In the Wizards, there's the 0-3 uh, Wizard that you play spells and it uh, pumps something by 3 power. You can't kill with Unholy Heat because it's a 0-3 and uh, only, only does 2 damage, this one will kill it. Uh, let's see. This one kills... Yeah, it kills so many things. Like the Pyromancer, it kills... Uh, in Angels, there's like a 1-4 creature that gives you 4 health every time an Angel enters and spawns a spirit when the Angels die. So this one will kill that because 1 plus 4 is still 5. Yeah, this card is, is sweet. Honestly, this card is really sweet. So I I would see it going in some control decks where you have four Fatal Pushes and you want a couple more. So maybe you have two of this one, uh, or maybe three and three. Hard to say, we'll have to play around with it and see. But it definitely looks really good. And even aggro decks might want this. Uh, a lot of times you're running about six removal spells in your aggro decks. So maybe you can have four Fatal Pushes and two cut downs in there as well, something like that. Very sweet, very sweet card. I um, think it's going to shake up Historic and probably Pioneer. And um, we'll see about Standard, depending on how fast paced Standard is. Definitely good against Aggro decks, though. So, yeah. So that card is sweet. Um, but yeah, let's look at the next one. Alright, Defiler of Dreams. This card, I'm not 100% sold on. I think it looks pretty cool though, the card design is interesting and it would make for some really sweet deck that doesn't really exist right now. So to me that that makes this interesting. Uh, so this card is a 5 mana, 3 colorless, 2 blue for a Phyrexian Sphinx. Uh, it's flying and it's a 4-3. So 5 mana, flying 4-3, not that great, uh, but it has this ability where Whenever you cast uh, a card that's a blue permanent spell, you may pay two life, and if you do, those spells cost one blue less to cast if you paid the life this way. And this reduces only the amount of blue mana you pay, so you can't reduce the colorless or the other colored pips. Alright, and whenever you cast a blue permanent spell, draw a card. So that is kind of what makes this card so interesting. A lot of the other ones that are similar in this cycle, they don't give you that great of an effect. Like you'll get a plus one plus one counter, or you might get like a one one angel, which is not bad. But um, drawing a card is definitely worth more than a one one angel or a one one counter. Um, so yeah, I think this could be really interesting, and maybe even spawn some new archetypes. Uh, it has to be a permanent, so you might be looking at some like blue-black aggro deck, or a blue-white flyer deck, or something like that, where you want to like play this and cast a few one-drops that are blue, or even play this on turn 6, and cast like uh, a two-drop, and draw a card back immediately and get your value for that. Um, we've seen a lot of like the, the rogues in Kamigawa, and... Um, there was like Grazalax that came out a few sets ago that is like uh, every time your creatures deal damage you draw a card, stuff like that. But there's Kaito Shizuki, you know, the Planeswalker that is a permanent and has a blue pip so you can play it for 2 mana instead of 3. Uh, so basically, the hope is you'll play this and you'll get some value when you first play it and then if it untaps and you survive for one turn Basically, you can dump your old hand and kind of just keep going and going and, and not run out of fuel at that point. So it's kind of like a great henge in blue for some uh, aggro style decks or even 
Could even be good in some like blue artifact deck if something like that could exist. So yeah, it's very interesting. Anytime you get free draw a card, you know, there's probably some way to break it. Free mana, free draw a card. Seems pretty sweet. It doesn't say one per turn, so that's a big thing. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe it won't be playable now. Maybe we'll have to wait a few sets till we get some really cheap blue permanents, but I think it has potential to be really good. So, seems cool. Alright, uh, next card, Fires of Victory. This is a pretty sweet 2 mana instant removal in red that, that we're getting. Uh, it reads a little bit better than it probably will play, so we'll have to wait and see if it's worse than it seems, but uh, basically it looks pretty sweet. So the card says um, it's 1 in a red, it's an instant, it has a kicker for 2 and a blue, and it says if this spell was kicked, draw a card, and fires a victory deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the number of cards in your hand. So think about the start of the game. You know, you're on the play or even on the draw. Um, you play a land turn one, maybe you pass it to them, they play creature turn one, comes back to you, and you play your land and then you can play this. And this is going to be doing like 5 damage on turn 2. So that, that's pretty good. Even if you were to, you know, wait to turn 3, it's still going to likely be about 4 damage on turn 3. So 5 damage turn 2, 4 damage turn 3, uh, you know, turn 5 maybe 3 damage if you're just constantly playing every turn, like playing something every turn. Uh, still not bad, so I think as long as it's getting 5 damage, 4 damage, or 3 damage, then this card is pretty good. Um, better than a lot of the other instant 2 mana removals in red. And I think the hope is that you can get that 4 damage off pretty consistently. So if you have a deck that um, is maybe drawing stuff, or your creatures are like putting lands in your hands or something so that you're getting some some value back and keeping your hand pretty full all the time, then this card is going to be pretty good and get you that value. Um, and then in the late game, when it's you know worse, because often in the late game you have less cards in your hand, like maybe you have three cards, uh, including this one, it's only going to be doing about two damage at that point. But you can cast it with the kicker and draw an extra card and it kind of then replaces itself at least and it's going to help boost its damage a little bit. So it's never going to be a zero damage spell because you always have the draw and um, yeah, you can help get your damage up to like two or three damage depending on how many cards are still in your hand. So very interesting. Um, it's uncommon so easy to craft. Uh, we'll have to see how really good it is though. Uh, if there's a lot of aggro decks in the meta, this will be good because you can get rid of something big early on. Um, rather than late game, the removal is not as important late game because uh, usually they're either, either lost against the aggro deck or won by that point. So yeah, looks very cool. I think it's a very interesting card design. So we'll have to see how it, how it turns out. Alright, uh, this next card is in Japanese, so you can't read it, uh, but I have a translation here, so let me pull that up real quick and uh, we can talk about this card. This one is very sweet, uh, some people have compared it to Snapcaster Mage, um, so if any of you know that card, it's, uh, it's kind of similar, it's pretty interesting. So here's what it says. Uh, it's a 1 and a blue. It has the new ability Read Ahead, which the new sagas all have that. Uh, the first step says, You may cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana 1 or 2 from your hand without paying its mana cost. So you immediately play this, and you can play another 2 mana spell for free from your hand. So kind of like giving you your mana back immediately. Um, kind of how, if anyone played during Fires of Invention, you always got to play the fires and then immediately play another second spell on that same turn. So it's kind of like that. Many fires have mentioned for two mana. Um, 
So that's nice. So you could play this and still play a removal spell. And then phase two, target player mills four cards. So probably the way this saga works out, you want to mill yourself. So you mill yourself four cards, get some instants and sorceries in your graveyard, uh, which also work with the six mana spell we saw earlier, right? To refill your hand. And then phase three of the saga says, exile target, instant or sorcery uh, from your graveyard, copy it, and you may cast the copy. So you play a spell, then you mill some, and then you choose either the one you cast, or the ones you milled, or something that was already in your graveyard, and you can copy it and, and uh, cast it. Cast it. So pretty cool. Basically, it uh, it's not card disadvantage because you're going to get to cast something from your graveyard in the end. Uh, it's a little bit of tempo advantage because you play this and you get to play something on the same turn. And um, it also is an enabler because it mills you. So if you have some of the other cards that care about having instants and sorcerers in your graveyard, then this is going to enable that. So, pretty sweet card. Uh, I'm really excited to see. I think this might be kind of the core and a new archetype about instance, instance and sorceries with that draw spell we saw earlier uh, with some creatures we'll see later that uh, care about instance and sorceries in your graveyard so really cool really interesting card uh, I'm looking forward to trying it out see how awesome it really is so yeah you have to let me in the comments let me know if you think this is as good as, as it looks to me but I, I think this card looks pretty sweet Okay, uh, this next card, Golden Argosy, is a vehicle, it's 4 mana for 3-6. Whenever this vehicle attacks, exile each creature that crewed it this turn and return them to the battlefield tapped under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So, uh, it's crew 1, which is very good. Most vehicles that have crew 1 have seen play and have been uh, quite good. Crew 1 is always very nice, and the body's pretty decent, 4 mana for a 3-6. And then um, the other thing to note is it so it's kind of blinks your creatures, right? It gives you the ETB again whenever you crew something. And um, actually with crew, you can crew more than the value that it wants. So even though it says crew 1, you could potentially crew it with 2 or 3 or 4 creatures, or however many creatures you want. And it's going to blink all of those creatures because you crewed them, uh, crewed this vehicle with that. And so, yeah, basically this is like a hard to kill engine that's going to keep blinking all your creatures and giving you lots of value. It's pretty sweet, seems pretty good uh, if there's a blink deck. I don't know if there will be a blink deck. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of cards right now, but maybe we'll see some in Dominaria. Maybe we'll see some in the future sets. Uh, who knows, but... The other thing is people are a little bit sick of Blink because we had Yorion for so long, and I think it's still a menace in Modern from what I hear, so... Uh, people might be burnt out on Blink-style decks, but if there is a Blink deck, this card would go in it. It's, it's a pretty sweet card. Alright, and then the last one we're going to look at for today, uh, Joyra Ageless Innovator. So uh, this is an artifact tribal deck basically, uh, tribal deck card I should say. Uh, it's blue and a red for a 2-3, so already pretty good stats for 2-2 two, two mana. And you tap it and put two ingenuity counters on Joyra Ageless Innovator. Then you may play an artifact card with mana value X or less from your hand to the battlefield where X is the number of ingenuity counters on Joyra. So you play it, you have to wait a turn for it to hope it survives, but if it survives, you tap and you immediately get two mana back. So you get to play some artifact from your hand for two mana. And uh, if it survives another turn, you tap it again and you get to play a four mana artifact for free, etc. So it just keeps keeps growing. Now in standard, I don't know if there's any way to abuse it. Um, and we don't have that many artifacts yet. I know Dominaria usually has artifacts, so we might be getting some more. And Brothers War is the next set, which is Urza, and Urza definitely is going to have artifacts. 
so um, yeah, there's definitely artifacts coming. But, so this will probably be a key part in any artifact matters deck. And uh, in historic, I think there's even ways to kind of abuse this because I know there's some artifacts that untap. So you could tap this, play that artifact, untap Joyra, tap Joyra again immediately, and play a four banner artifact. Uh, so there's probably some crazy combo stuff that you can do in Historic or you maybe even Pioneer with Joyra and artifacts and tapping stuff and going crazy. So uh, yeah, it looks like a pretty sweet card. We'll have to see if it makes the cut standard. Maybe not, but uh, I'm sure this will find some play either in a pet deck or maybe in some strong artifact decks. Who knows, but looks pretty sweet. Really loving the design that they're putting on these cards for Dominator United. So anyway folks, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, there's a lot more cards that I think look really sweet and we'll discuss more about them later. But uh, yeah, uh, for now, those are the first, uh, the first few that I think look really cool that I'm excited to brew around. And stay tuned for more. Uh, more previews cards and uh, in a few days I'll put out my top five new brews for Dominar United uh, So be looking for that and until next time see ya